Okay. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, the phone number. That's the phone number to my office. This is my cell phone number here. So if you ever just, you know, you're going to be late or you might not be in the class and you just uh, just want to send a message, you can just text it instead of calling. That's fine. Uh, keep it. And then some students have been using this. I mean, even past um, their time in class. Um, as a matter of fact, I saw a student not too long ago. And I was like, well, just go back to your syllabus and get the number. And they were like, oh, that's fine. Yeah. So that's my cell phone number or the way you get in contact with me. If you want my schedule, it's on the Google Calendar here. This link here. It is also here. So if you click this, this will show you my Google Calendar. Right now, I haven't populated everything out. It would normally look, let me go back, go back two months, give you an idea. It would look like this, right? Where it outline all of my classes and my office hours. Um, so let me give you a heads up here. These blank spaces don't mean that I'm doing nothing. They just mean it's none of your business. That's what I mean. So, <laughs> I mean, the truth be told, I mean, you really don't want to see, right? I took my kid to basketball practice. I took my daughter to dance practice, right? You don't want to see that. The office hours are in here, so those are the times if you want to schedule a time to meet with me and stuff, just contact me and say, hey, I want to come into your office hours. Perfectly fine. Everybody with me? The flexible office hours, definitely you're going to need a... Um, you're gonna need um, to contact me and set up an appointment for those because you know it's 50 50 if I'll be in here or not. Um, the required office hours, I'll be here. Everybody with me? So normally that's before class. Normally I get in about 7:45, 8 o'clock ish. So I'm here until 9:30, and then um, after this class I'll stay until maybe about one. That makes sense. This class is what, 11, 12, 15, so it's about one. All right. Um, let's see here. I gave you guys the text um, that we need, so that's fine. Descriptions, objectives, these are things that you guys can uh, read on your own time. There's no uh, need for that. Attendance policy. I strongly uh, suggest that you guys try to make all the classes. Uh, for you, is only 16 class time that we're going to meet, 17 counting the final. Uh, hopefully, you will make it to the final, so that would be uh, great. Um, but right now, it's only 16, so you only have 15 to go. Um, I know I kind of make it kind of like... I mean, you can't make 15 classes, but I mean, in four months, things happen. That makes sense. But I would definitely try to make it, um, try to make it a uh, a goal of mine to make all the classes. That makes sense. It's only 15. As a matter of fact, no, um, let me check that already. It's only 14 because you only guys only have 14 left to go because uh, there's no class next week. Um, I have to do something for the school. It's going to send me out of the country, so I'll be no. back. Huh? No. Columbia. So, yeah, you can't be there. So, <laughs> normally I'm in the States for Dr. Martin Luther King's Day, and I do some, um, some uh, I do um, volunteer work. However, if you would like to send me on a free trip to Columbia, I think me and Dr. King can make some concessions this year. Next year, we'll be back to volunteering for <laughs> whatever it is. Right. All right. So, yeah. So, this Tuesday, um, so we'll meet. Our next meeting is actually going to be two weeks from today. I forgot all about that. It might, all, it might be two weeks from today because I, I keep hearing the snow, the snow thing again. So, who knows? Last day to drop is March 24th. So, uh, please keep that in mind. Right. Uh, we'll talk about that more uh, the closer we get. Elements of success. Elements of success is something that I have on my syllabus. I also have on the welcome part of the um, of the class page, so you guys can read it. 
These are just some good suggestions. Don't take this as you have to do all 10 of these things in order, or nine of these things in order to be successful in a class. It's not what I'm trying to communicate. I'm just communicating to you just some good tenets to have that um, could not could make you successful, not only in this class, but in any class that you take, right, throughout your college career. Um, a colleague of mine created these, and I found them fantastic, and I just implemented them into my class. A lot of this stuff I did not create. I don't make the wheel. I purchased the wheel. So, you know, elements of success, definitely read them. And as I said, if you, even if you implemented one, I'm sure you'll see um, dividends uh, for your effort. All right, so grading, which is a huge thing for this class, right? I grade, um, so first of all, I grade according to points. So you see everything says points, points, points. And grading here values uh, according to points. You have probably come from the world of being graded in percentages, right? And so what does that mean? That means you get an A on your first exam, you get an A on your second exam, you get an A on your third exam, you're going into your final with an A, let's say you get an F on the final, a zero. Now you average that out and you pretty much got a 75, right? Now, does that mean that's your comprehension level for the class? Probably not. Does that make sense? It just means that you had a bad day. You might not even had a bad day. There could have been things that happened in your, in your sphere, right? Parents get to fighting, you had an accident, babysitter calls out. There's just things that happen that can affect your grade that are beyond your, um, your control. That makes sense? You're more on the reactionary section than the pro-action section. So um, I don't agree with um, averages. Furthermore, I also think that averages, man, is it funny that I say I don't agree with averages? Yeah. Well, y'all are gonna hate it in a second because all of y'all got, you know this is coming. All of y'all got these laptops out and these cell phones. Let me hip you to this. My class has no laptops and no cell phones. You pull out your laptops and cell phones, it costs you 50 points. So it's not a total ban, but it costs you 50 points. I've charged people 600 points in a class. But we're not there yet, so you don't have to put your stuff up. You still, <laughs> you're not there, right? right? Don't, it's not yet, but I'm just telling you, we're on the way. That makes sense? like Alice in Wonderland is like, we are not at the cat yet, but we're almost there. I'm just warning you, once we get there, everything changes. All right, so back to points. I don't think that points is very reflective of the business world, right? I think that the business world, we grow our greatness off of um, success, right? And, it's, and you build that success every day that you come and you do what it is that you do. So to give you an example, Warren Buffett, does everybody know who Warren Buffett is? Who is he? Billionaire. Yeah, that'll help, right? right. What else? He's an investor. Yeah, yeah, he's investing, he invests in, uh, in a diverse portfolio of companies, right? Anybody know what Warren Buffett's first company was? No, before Coca-Cola, selling Cokes. Let's say Coca-Cola. <laughs> I am going to post this part of the video up. I don't want it to go out viral. Somebody said Warren Buffett sells Coke. <laughs> so what is it? Anybody remember? Anybody know? He was a textile guy. He, he earned a, he owned a textile guy. Does anybody remember Warren Buffett? Like some of your faces, I can look now and say, like what, textiles? Does anybody remember Warren Buffett, the textile guy? No, right, why? Because that business went bankrupt, it went belly up. 
out of business. So the truth is Warren Buffett only has two businesses, the one, the Berkshire Hathaway that you know today, and the textile company that he started with in the very beginnings of his entrepreneurial career. So what does that mean? That means in, ac in academia, we would tell Mr. Buffett that he has an A and an F. He earned an F back in like the 50s and 60s, but currently he has an A. So an A and an F averages out to be a what? 50. So that's an F. Do you feel like Warren Buffett is a failing entrepreneur or businessman? No. That's only some stuff that, that uh, academics have thought of. So, so, what do we do? Come on, sit down. If you're in this class, you're in accounting? Yeah, accounting okay. too early. All right, so what do I do? I don't grade on averages, I grade on points. As you build your points, you build your grade, right? The only thing that can take down your grade is one thing. And you know what that is? Technology. This use of technology in the classroom. Outside of that, nothing else can take, your, take down your grade. So once you get to the level of having a B in my class, you're there. Unless you decide to come into class one day and have a whole conversation with your friend. Right, and you're not there anymore, right? Um, outside of that, um, where you are is, where, wherever you build it is where you are. I will forewarn you that in the beginning, right, like right now, you only have, well, you'll have 20 points at the end of this class because that's attendance, right? That, that's an F, so you're gonna need me to leave, I mean, not leave, you need me to live until like April when you start getting a better grade than an F. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. But outside of that, once you build it, it that is where you're gonna be. That makes sense? And I think that's more like what business is. So, whoa, I almost fell. Did y'all see that? I think that's what Man, no, that's gotta go. That's, that's going in. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm ashamed of very few things, trust me. Which are? I don't know what they are yet. <laughs> <laughs> we had a long talk with one of my little sisters, and I said, she said, um, she's, she was like 20 something. Under, well, someone that's very close to me was basically like a little sister. And she said, um, she said, if. They came out and accused you of having an affair. I said, uh, he, she said, well, what would you do? I said, uh, how good did she do? I might get on stage. Because that's what everybody is expecting you to say, what? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I apologize to my family. My 22 year old son will probably be like, damn, dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not ashamed of too much. <laughs> All right. So, here's the grading matrix. So, if you see, once you get to 343,000, there's 4,600 points available to you. Once you get to 3,444 points, right, you get a C. C to me is like passing. To the school, 3,220 points is um, a D, which is passing to the school. But, uh, yeah. And the biggest thing for you guys to see, and the large thing, one thing I would definitely want to point out to everybody, if you notice, there's only really like 220 points between one group, and that's about four or five hundred points here, all right, four or five there. I'm pointing that out because once you get past, once you get past the D range, your next grade will come very fast. That makes sense? I mean, 200 points is nothing but two homeworks. So once you build this, the grade, once you build your grade up, like you going from D to C and C to B and B to A, it happens very fast, but the first 3,000 points, it, it's a plot. Everybody with me?
All right. Um, so how do you get your points? So here's the breakdown. So I have six, well, actually five things that I grade you on. Attendance and participation, which is 13% of the class. Uh, homeworks, which is 26% of the class. Workbook assignments, which is also, which is 20% of the class. And then I have videos for you to watch online. And that's 9% of the class. Let me hit pause for a Are second. The videos on Connect? No, they're on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, so nobody watches Connect. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Is Connect just the book? Connect is the book, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so then how would you know who watched it? Uh, I'm going to either have you guys put in a message okay. or I'm going to have you go through Blackboard. If I set it up correctly, if you go through Blackboard, it will tell me what you've done but I mean I then the third way is that if you don't watch the videos there's like sometimes there's stuff I put in the video and then I just bring it in the up in class and when you don't know it looks bad right it's like reading a little red riding hood and I ask you about the wolf and you're like what wolf <laughs> clear indication did you have a question Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to point this out though. So let me stop here. So before you get to the exam, if you look at this, oh, 9, 35, 9 plus 26 is 35, 55, 68%. That means if you scored a zero all your exams, you can make a high D. You, you will be basically at the doorstep of a C without doing anything on your exams. There's a reason I do this. It's because I think that some students have anxiety when they take their exams. And I am not a, vi a big fan of a student that comes to class every day, does their work at an A level, and still fails the class. That, I, I just don't, I'm not a fan of that. So I don't, make, I don't give you a, a C, but I damn near put you out at the front door. That makes sense. So, you know, if you make an attempt on your exams, you should at least pass this class with a C, right? But that also requires you to come to class every day. That also requires you to make 100 on all your homeworks and all your workbook and watch your videos. That makes sense? But if you put in that type of work, I expect something on your exams. Um. There's no late class, late assignments. There are no late assignments. Let me tell you something. Most of you, all your assignments will be due on Thursdays at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will not change the time if I'm not in the same time zone. However, let me tell you this. I am not up at 11.59 p.m. cutting off your homework. Don't text me at 11.59 for 15 more minutes. Don't contact me. I'm asleep. I set up the homework like last weekend. So come February, don't be like, oh, I need, I need a couple of more minutes. Professor Jenkins, are you there? I know you're there. You cut the homework off. No, I didn't cut the homework off. <laughs> right? Right? And I'm asleep, right? So just a little heads up. You know, sending a message to me at midnight is the same thing as sending it to me at 6 a.m. Same time. Same, same time. I'm asleep. That makes sense. Unless, like, I don't know, it's basketball season now. So, unless the NBA Finals goes into triple overtime, I'm not awake. And even if I'm awake at that point, I'm not answering any messages. I'm glued to the screen. Trust me. <laughs> so, no late assignments. Um, Dress code, dress code is, I mean, there's things on here. For the guys, the normal violation is hats. So if you got a hat on, it's time for you to take it off. Yeah, so, yeah. Weather policy, it seems like we're gonna have a lot of weather. We've kicked this off pretty, um, it's, it's been an interesting winter, right? Um, so the weather policy is normally, 
Um, if you haven't noticed, I will allow, I'm kind of, I'm really flexible because I don't want anybody to like get off the road or anything like that. So I'm pretty flexible. So sometimes I might put in an announcement just like you had that says that, um, you know, like you can come in 30 minutes late or take your time, be safe because, you know, we're just that type of person. So you're more than likely going to get a late announcement from me than you would from the school. Does that make sense? So just keep those things in mind. Um, late doesn't mean, oh, let me say this. Late does not mean I'm not going to start at 11 o'clock. Late just means that I will probably take roll at 12. Everybody with me? So there'll be things that are said in the beginning of the day. But I just won't, you know, I just won't go into it. Fire. If there's ever a fire, we're going out the door, right? Look at that. That is awesome. Somebody wrote me a message. Um, fire is um, you'll be going out the door as you guys get to know know me right and get past the, uh, I guess the wedding process and you get through the honeymoon and you start to know me you'll realize how I know that's my address but <laughs> if you go over here fire we're gonna go down the uh, stairwell we'll come out normally they want us to meet on this side but just follow my direction I might have us meet on the right side please come out because I'm gonna take roll and then once I take roll there is probably a good chance I'll let you just go home right don't go outside and just jump in the car it's a no-go right the other part um, and, and the reason it's a no-go is because if I take the roll and I don't know they might have me be uh, um, floor warden but if I take the roll and you're not here, I'm gonna to try to come back in and get you. Does that make sense? And if I die, like God forbid that, right, coming in and get you, then that's not gonna be a good deal because um, I used to be, uh, prior to this job, well, two jobs prior to this, I was on SWAT, right? I was on the SWAT team. And so you won't be the first person that I've gone back to try to slay, say, Save, right? <laughs> That's so crazy. Those words are that close. I didn't even realize that. And I'm, I'm a 42-year-old black man. I should have known that. Save your slave is that close. That's ridiculous. I feel like I've been had. I like Spanish because free and book are so close. Libre and Libra. I like that. Maybe we should... <laughs> All right, so anyway, what I was saying is that, um, it, yeah, you don't want me to come back because if I come back and try to save you, what is going to happen is that, you know, I'll, I'll probably have a very nice funeral, right? The state of Indiana will probably come down and tuck me in real nice. But during that funeral, I can guarantee you that my commander or someone in, on that force is gonna to turn to the sheriff of Loudoun County and say, how did he die? And the sh if the sheriff's answer is, he went back trying to save that kid, and that kid was down there at Chick-fil-A, right? I'm sure my commander's next response would be like, you got an address for that kid, and he'll pay you a house bill. You would realize that I am a nice guy, because they're not nice people. Everybody with me? It's not a threat, I'm just telling you, I'm just, I'm just being. And people are like, is that a threat? I'm like, it's not a threat. I'm just, it's like, you know, like you're talking about your drunk uncle, you're like, hey, don't give him $5, he'll go buy alcohol, right? It's not a threat. <laughs> <laughs> you're just telling you what the reality of life is. All right, so yeah, so please just follow, and then, you know, if there's ever like, I have to shoot him or anything, you know, at this point, I will guarantee you that you're going to make it. I'm going to guarantee you you're going to make it until I tell you you're not going to make it, right? And it's all bets off. But um, I have a very good track record. So one day I'll tell you the story about um, when I first started teaching, when I first got off the team, I taught the semester after Virginia Tech. I have to tell you that story. That's a crazy story. I really feel bad for those students because it's a crazy story.
<laughs> so that's the fire exit. As I said, if there, we have an active shooter. And if anybody in here, if you if you're ever feeling like tense or anything, you have an issue, there's numbers on here, right? Uh, sexual assault, if anything happens to you, hotlines, I put all that stuff on here. If any of that stuff happens, uh, reach out to somebody, right? I mean, I know you just met me. If you feel like you want to comply, that's all good. If these debits and credits all of a sudden think you're like, man, I really want to talk to you. Like, I'm Oprah or something. It's, I mean, you know. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> but uh, you know, just don't, just don't let this stuff stress you out. Don't let this class stress you out. That makes sense. When you jump up, you're like, I ain't had enough of these debits and credit. I'll be like, me too. Let's go, buddy. Let's just leave. Let's just go home. All right, I'll meet you down here in Millie. We'll have a drink. You can tell me all about it. <laughs> but I am very easygoing. Um. Last but not least, here we go. This is the technology. Right. All setting devices are to be on silent and vibrate during class. So others' learning experience can be respected. Text messaging and using a cell phone or computer outside for outside reasons is forbidden unless it disrupts the class setting. Students who abuse the technology, abuse technology will receive a 50 point deduction per incident. If their cell phone alarm sounds or they're seen misusing um, technology, however, the professors deem professor is professors deemed to uh, to be in violation of the same rule. Everybody gets fifty points. So when my phone goes off, you all get fifty points. When each of your phones go off, you get you know not not as a whole, just individually, you get points. <laughs> What's your number? <laughs> <laughs> Professor reserves the right to dictate what represents a violation and what does not. That means it's my call. That makes sense? So I hold you to the same standard that I hold myself. Fair deal? Go ahead. What if there's an emergency? You can answer your phone. I'm, the, I'm not saying you can't answer your phone. It will cost you 50 points. Right? <laughs> it will cost you 50 points. Uh, no. okay. Anybody else? Um, one last thing. Let me just 